The most common comment that came up when I spent a year researching the art of napping was that a lot of people felt that they were just no good at it. There were two main complaints. First, that people had a hard time actually falling asleep when they put their head down, and it just felt like a waste of time. The second complaint was that sometimes they'd wake up from a nap and feel like they were sort of underwater. It was impossible for them to fully wake up, and it sort of ruined the rest of their day. I loved these questions, because in reality, they're really simple to answer. In fact, they're so easy to address that I decided that the book I was going to write should shouldn't be about napping at all, but instead I redirected all of my efforts into a much more personally fascinating subject that took over my attention along the way, which is dreaming. Basically, I got so good at napping that I wanted to know what was happening when I was actually asleep, but that's the subject for another video. You want to know how to take the perfect nap. Let's start with that underwater feeling question first. The average human sleep cycle traverses through several sleep stages from hypnagogia to NREM, which is non-REM sleep, to deep sleep, and then to REM sleep. Understanding that it's a cycle is important. The entire process takes about 90 minutes, and it's not advisable to deviate from that preordained pattern. It's locked into your physiology. If you don't complete a full cycle, and you wake up in REM sleep or in deep sleep, your body will not want to cooperate. It's sort of like if you were running a dishwasher and you opened it up during the rinsing phase. Water's gonna get everywhere when you open up that, you know, the door. This incomplete feeling is what sleep scientists call sleep inertia. Once you start to progress through the sleep cycle, the body wants to run the entire program, and waking up immediately is disorienting. To counteract this, you want your naps to be either short enough that you don't get into those deeper and more difficult to get out of stages, or complete enough that you get through an entire cycle. In practice, this means that you should aim to have a quick nap of no more than 20 to 25 minutes from the moment that you put your head down on the pillow, or at least 90 minutes so that you can complete a full REM cycle. At 20 minutes, you've just gotten a taste of what sleep will offer, but it's often enough rest to supercharge the rest of your day. It's also really good to give yourself like creative new ideas, and I am a huge proponent of these sorts of short naps. Incidentally, the grogginess from sleep inertia is just the flip side of the same problem as someone who says that they have a lot of trouble falling asleep when they're already wide awake. Just like in sleep, there are also cognitive ebbs and flows throughout the waking day. When you're fully alert, you can't just simply turn your body down if you're fully energized. Your body isn't ready for sleep. The magic of naps is often in the timing. In general, you want to time your nap to coincide with a dip in melatonin that occurs for most people about eight to 10 hours after they wake up in the morning. For me, this usually means lying down around two or 3 p.m for a short restorative nap, or a longer, much more luxurious one if I have time for the full 90 minutes. The second thing that I want to address is people saying that they have a hard time actually falling asleep. Well, I have good news for you. While there are lots of meditation techniques that I might recommend that will help you tune down your consciousness and fall asleep quickly, and you can see some of those videos like the one I did on Yoga Nidra in these playlists, there's also one called the Rosenberg Protocol, which I think is pretty great. But the truth is, even if you don't fall asleep during your naps, you are still getting restorative benefits. Think of a nap as a break for your mind to get out of that constant, like, focused stuff that you do all day so that you can sort of drift off and think about different things. And you can't think your way into sleep. Like, if you're really anxious about it, you're not going to fall asleep because you're thinking about sleep. So don't put pressure on it like it's a goal of something that you have to achieve. Just enjoy the break from whatever it is that you were doing. And the more you try to nap, well, the more you'll get out of it. And that's the quick and dirty guide to napping. And it's really all that you need to say about it if you were going to write a book about it, which is why I didn't end 
<laughs> writing a book about it. But if you have any tips that work for you that let you fall asleep quickly, let me know down in the comments because I'm always interested in experimenting with cool things. And don't forget to check out my playlist for other sleep tips and tricks and the science of what I came across while researching my book, Dream, The Art and Science of Slumber.